are listening to our YouTube uh, channel. We are happy that you're here. And today uh, I am your host, Barbara, and Brother Pete is the co-host for you. Um, our topic today is the Gregorian calendar and the calendar of the Bible and how they differ. The Gregorian calendar has many holidays during its year. First is Christmas, Easter, All Saints Day, Halloween, Mardi Gras, Lent, Valentine's Day. And you've heard of them all, and they're on that calendar that hangs on your wall. Uh, the Gregorian calendar months of the year are all named after the different pagan gods of ancient times. Uh, maybe we didn't know that when we went to school, they start teaching you these names in first and second grade. You learn the the months of the year, but what is their origin? Pagan origins of the names of the months. Um, each month, of course, is followed by its pagan name. So we have January is Janus, the god of doors. This month op month opens the year. February is Februo, and it's named for purity. This is the Roman month of sacrifices and purification. March comes from Mars, the god of war. In the spring, that's when the when all the kings went out to war, because they didn't war during the winter. April is Aphrodite, or Aphrodite, meaning open. This is the month when trees open their leaves. This is also named after Aphrodite, the goddess of, of love. May is Maia, the goddess of growth. This is the month when plants really begin their growth. June is Juno, the queen of the gods. July is named after the uh, name <laughs> Julius Caesar, named this month after himself, who was a ruler of Rome, and Augustus, not to be outdone, named this month after himself. So we have Augustus. September is for a number, is septum for seven. October is octo for eight. November is novum for nine. And December is decem for 10. And that's where our months come from. Okay, then here they are again. Now the biblical calendar shows some of the months that are listed in the Bible, like Abib and Sivan, uh, Adar. And uh, then again here, the Gregorian calendar is named after a pagan deity. The Gregorian calendar weekdays of the year are all named after different pagan gods of ancient times. So the months are after the planets and false gods, and so are the weekdays. We have Moon Day. We have that's Monday, Tuesday is the God of Chu, and Wednesday uh, Wooden, Thursday Thor, Friday Frigg, Saturday Saturn worship, Sunday is Sun worship. Here we have a chart showing the days, uh, uh, the days of the week, given the number. The next column shows uh, the days of the week as found in the scriptures. You notice they're all numbered. We'll come back to that. Uh, but the Gregorian, then the next section is the Gregorian day, and shows the gods of those days and the star or planet for which it is named. So day one is called day one uh, of the week. It's the first work day. Um, and the Gregorian calendar, we call it Sunday, and it is the uh, Solus, the sun god, is named, who it's named for, and there's a whole list of the gods that are equivalent to that, and of course the planet, or the star, is sun, is the sun. <clears throat> day two is, of course, the second work day. It's called Monday in the Gregorian system, and it's named after the moon goddess, or the moon personified as, and we'll see those, uh, Selene, uh, Selene and Lunas, and so forth, and the, the planet, of course, is the moon. Uh, the third day, scripturally, is the third day, <clears throat> Tuesday, the god of power and energy, and that is Mars, again, the god of war, four, it's Wednesday, or Wooden's day, it is the god of knowledge or wisdom, personified as Wooden or, or Od Odin and so forth, and that, that planet is Mercury. Fifth is Thursday, God of Thunder, and we see his other names listed there, and that is the planet of Jupiter. <clears throat> Sixth is Friday, the goddess of love, person personified as Frigg, and that planet, of course, is the planet of love, Venus. 
<clears throat> and seven is is the only na- day of the week given a name in Scripture, and it's Sabbath or Shabbat, and it is uh, Saturday, called uh, Saturday of the Gregorian system, and it is the god of Saturn personified, and that is uh, the planet Saturn. So for Bible students, we can see this Gregorian calendar has paganism written all over it, all over its face. Exodus 23:13 says, "Pay attention to all that I have said to you, and make no mention of the names of other gods, nor let it be heard on your lips." Psalm 16:4, "Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another god; their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names unto my lips." And of course, we don't offer really. A, um, <laughs> we have stated all these God's names in telling you about this, and uh, each person has to figure out how they will manage that. <laughs> I know. Uh, we say them, and I say them when I say we're, when we're going to meet again, and uh, we live by that Gregorian calendar. Uh, it's really difficult. Yeah. Um, but uh, this, we know, is the Gregorian, and it's a Roman calendar, this is not the calendar of our Bible. These names are not listed for us in our Bible. So uh, this, I'll explain, is a Gregorian calendar uh, showing the work days, and then the rest days are like on the weekend. There's only two types of days in a Gregorian calendar. There's uh, the work days and a Sabbath, and there's only two categories. But what does does the Bible say? Let's look at what the Bible says. We have seen that the two, that the Gregorian calendar has two categories of days, but Scripture says the calendar has three categories of days, as found in Ezekiel 46.1. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, the gates of the inner court that looketh to the east shall be shut the six working days. That's one kind of day. But on the Sabbath, it shall be opened. That's a second kind of day. And in the day of the new moon, it shall be opened. There is the third type of day. Okay. Um, now we see a real big difference. The scriptural calendar has three categories of days with new moon and its calculation of time. And this throws the whole weekly cycle off on the Gregorian calendar. And then it reestablished the true weekly cycle by including the new moon in its reckoning of time. And uh, Brother Pete, would you want to explain a little bit about this? Certainly, certainly. We see in the center here the, the creator's calendar. And although it looks like a Gregorian calendar, it is not. It is the same for every month. The magic or the difference between it and the Gregorian system is that these, this calendar locks to the cycles of the moon. The cycle of the moon is slightly longer than, um, than the 30 days, so there will be an extra day or two, depending upon the moon cycle, added to this to, make, to keep this synced. So every month we'll have a, let's call it a, um, a, a pause period or a, um, a leap, yes, a, a leap day. That's, the, that's probably the right word to use. It's sort of a leap day or days, which are called the new moon or new moon days. So we see that the moon, the calendar starts um, over here on the left, and it is the first day of the new moon. And then we see the first week continue down to the middle and the bottom, the first quarter. That would be the eighth day. And then seven days later, we will have the full moon. Um, and then seven days later, we will be to the third quarter, which is a half moon if you look up in the sky, and that would be in the morning hours that you would see that. And then as it wanes further, we go back to the new moon again, where we have the end of the end of the thirtieth the thirtieth day of the new moon, and then the cycle begins again. With the new moon put back into its weekly cycle and monthly calendar, the week cycle starts its count from the new moon going forward to the weekdays, then the Sabbath. Okay, 
Okay, well, um, what makes this difference is the new moon can fall on any day on a Gregorian calendar. If the new moon falls on a Gregorian Monday, then the next four Mondays will be the seventh day Sabbath. If you're looking at a Gregorian calendar and it fell on a Monday, it would all line up on that day. But uh, the new moon sets the day, and the Father's calendar is in the heavens. But when we look at the paper calendar, uh, if it if new moon was on Tuesday or uh, Saturday, then they would all line up on a Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar floats. The Father's calendar does not float. So uh, this reckoning was established at creation, new moon day in Genesis chapter 1, where it states and where the creator says, let there be light. And he calls the light day, and that day is new moon day because the very event is the evening and morning where the first day of the week, uh, continuing to the seventh day. And that's all found in Genesis 1. So here we see the three categories of day of creation week, uh, the new moon day and the week and the Sabbath. So uh, here is another uh, example where the moon phases are seven days apart. The weekly cycle starts at the count of new moon. So I like this one because it shows Sabbath, first quarter, number eight, second Sabbath, and they're seven days apart. In the original calendar, they were always exactly seven days apart. There was always 30-day calendar. So uh, this is what it looks like, and the Sabbaths are always the 8, 15, 22nd, and 29, and it is nature's testimony. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge, and that's from the book of Psalms. Now, let's go a bit deeper. The mark of the beast and the seal of Yah. Well, true worship is the seal of Yah, Natchum Exodus 31, 13, Ezekiel 20, 12 through 24, and false worship, Ezekiel 8, 16. And I believe that's where they had their faces to the east, worshiping the sun. The Pope, uh, Pope Gregory, of course, whose sign is the dragon, that's a uh, uh, is the establisher of the of the uh, of the Julian calendar, Gregorian calendar, excuse me. Um, and T. Enbright said, was a bishop of um, St. Alfonso's Church in St. Louis, Missouri, said it was the Catholic Church which made the law obligating to keep the Sunday holy. The Church made this law long after the Bible was written. Hence, said law is not in the Bible. The Catholic Church abolished not only the Sabbath, but all the other Jewish festivals. Of course, that's a true statement. Okay, so here we have um, how the calendar began with the Julian calendar in 46 B.C., and it was a eight-day week calendar, letters A through H. That's the calendar that was around at the time of Yeshua. And then in 1582, we have Pope Gregory the 13th uh, is still a Roman calendar, and he established it then. And he put, um, and of course, Constantine in 300s put um, Saturday towards the end of the week to make the Jewish people have a seventh-day Sabbath. But uh, all the Sabbath and feast days were done away with. And on the on the father's calendar, but the Gregorian calendar, you might be surprised to know, is only 439 years old, and a lot of the world, all the world now, has accepted the Gregorian calendar. So, uh, is Christmas pagan? Sunday, straight from the horse's mouth. Prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience 
to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. And again, that is Thomas Enright. The Gregorian calendar supports all the beast days, such as Christmas, Easter, and others. The mark of the beast could very well be the whole pagan Gregorian calendar system and the keeping of it. So the scriptural calendar, the lunar solar calendar in the Bible supports the feast days, including the Sabbath, and it's all found in Leviticus chapter 23. I hope you will go and read that chapter. It shows Sabbath as the first feast day. Daniel 7.25, and he shall speak, speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And of course, we are seeing the changes in the times, the keeping of Yahweh's calendar. That's right, Brother Pete. And uh, Yehovah says he changes not, Malachi 3, 6. He said, I am Yehovah, I change not. He is not changing his calendar and he is not changing his Sabbath or feast days. So the Sabbath is a sign between Yah and his people and that has never been changed. So we identify the two seals. One is the seal on the children of God. And the second is the mark of the beast. So let's look at their character qualities identified in Scripture. One will be the true worship. It will be the adoration of the Creator. It is based on the, on the keeping of the commands of God. It is a protection signal placed on the forehead. The mark of the beast, and only on the forehead. The mark of the beast, however, is false worship, an adoration to the beast. It is a following of the commandments of men. And it's a sign of condemnation. And it, it is found on the forehead and on the hand. And, of course, that is associated with the number 666. So there is scriptural difference between the worship of Satan and the worship of the great I Am, Jehovah. The scriptures are our safeguard. Uh, and Isaiah 8.20 says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And another quote, I can leave the link below. Uh, the Bible of Jehovah, are, the people of Jehovah are directed to the scriptures as their safeguard against the influence of false teachers and the delusive powers of spirits of darkness. Satan employs every possible device to prevent men from obtaining a knowledge of the Bible and the true Sabbath of the Bible. Exodus 20, 8-11. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Ezekiel 20, 18 through 20. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am Jehovah your Elohim. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Jehovah your Elohim. So uh, the Sabbath we are to guard by all means, for this is a sign between Jehovah and he says between me and you throughout your generations to know that I, Jehovah, kadosh you. And that's from Exodus 31, 13. Set apart and to be made holy is kadosh. The Sabbath day. This is what this whole uh, study is about today, the Sabbath day, restoring the sacred rhythms of rest and delight that are established in the Bible. 
and in the lunar solar calendar in the heavens. So uh, Psalms 19.1, David said, The heavens proclaim the glory of Yah, and the skies display his craftsmanship. So we invite you to go to our website, lunarsabbathday.com, to access more information about the calendar in the heavens, the lunar solar calendar that is the creator's calendar that he established in, in the scriptures that you will find in the scriptures. Also, there is a lot of material there showing you the paganism of the Gregorian calendar. So uh, thank you for being here today, and I invite everyone to be with us again next week.